Hey folks, this is Rose from In Rose's Garden. Hope you're having a really nice day. Today we're going to work on a pair of earrings using the um, December Bargain Beadbox Winter Wonderland. Now, I have designed the earrings already. This is what they're going to look like when finished. Sorry, I have a touch of the sniffles today. Um, but anyway, let's get turned down and I'll show you everything we're going to need as, and then we can get started on them. Okay, so we are going to need um, these little cute little, I'm not sure, I guess they're a connector from the Bargain Bead Box. And we're going to use one on either e earring, like so. We have some um, lever back ear wires, some crimp tubes, two eye pins. I use ball head because I really like the extra oomph. Then we're going to need these purpley iridescent beads. I think these are pretty, aren't they? And two of these, one for each earring. So we'll just take two of these out right now. Put the other two aside and we'll put them in this tray right here i got out and then we're going to need some of these spacer beads we'll also need some wire to do the um, loop from loop to loop i have chosen a silver um, soft flex it's very pretty and it will go well with the silver items. And then we're going to need um, a little bit of 20 gauge wire. This is um, 20 gauge German style wire by Beadalon. And this is to put the top little piece in with the one bead and then to hook it to the ear wire. So right in here. So we won't need very much of this, but we will need a little bit. We'll put that aside for now because that's probably the last thing we're going to need. So... What we're going to do to start with is to um, put the eye pins on these crystals. And as you can see, that makes a really pretty, the ball head looks really pretty down there. Now, if your bead were to have a large enough hole that it would slip off the end, um, you can use a small seed bead or a little spacer at the bottom to um, hold that in place so it won't fall off. But now we need to get these wrapped. So to do that, we want to get our... Anyway, um, we'll put our pliers, put here, bend this over. And now you can use your round, uh, round nose pliers or what I use is the smallest size of my belt making pliers. So just put that in, pull it around, let it slip downwards. Didn't mean to have it fall out, but same effect. Pull it around the rest of the way. Straighten it so that your ring is straight. And then wrap. Now you can do this with your pliers if you want, if you feel that you can't really do it easily with your fingers. And I sometimes do. I think the pliers sometimes gives you a little more control because sometimes it's hard to wrap with your fingers. But I've been wrapping with my fingers for a long time, so I'm pretty good at it. Now we can straighten this head up a little bit. You can see it's a little crooked, so we're going to pull it over this way. And there she's straight. Now we want to cut this extra little bit off, being very careful not to cut anything other than the wires you want to cut. So look to see where you're at. Get in there and trim that baby off, and I should have held that. So then tuck the extra little wire in. And again, if you're 
now I've made yourself crooked a little bit here. Just straighten it up with your pliers. And there is one of our, oops, that one's not tucked very well. Let's get it in there a little better. Okay, so there's one done. Now we will probably want to turn this this direction because this is going to hang on the bead strand. So in that case we want this a little straighter yet. There we go. So there's one done. We'll set that aside. Let's do the second one. Same way. Pliers. Bend. Bell making pliers or round nose. Around you go. Boy, I've got better fingers with my tools today. And there's our loop. And now wrap. Cut the excess off. Being, like I said, very careful so that you don't get your ring or a different pair of different place in your wire. And now tuck it in. Come here, baby. <laughs> and there is the extra wire right there. So tuck, tuck, tuck. Now I sometimes go around in a circle like I'm doing because sometimes that last little loop doesn't want to go in really straight. And uh, if it hangs out a bit, then it will cause you some problems. So let's just get it. So we just get it straight like that. And as you can see, this one turned out really easily well. So that one's ready to go over here. Now we won't need these for a while. So we'll put those in here as well as two of our um, and we're going to open this up and we're going to put the blue beads in here as this is going to be our next step. So let's open our package up and cut our beads loose, put them in the tray. Now if these go all over the place, don't be surprised because that happens to me quite frequently. And the last little bit. Where are you hung up that wire? Well, managed to do that without getting any beads all over the place. Excellent. And then we want the silver spacers as well. And I'm just going to pour a few out here because I'm not sure how many I'm going to need. So we will just continue from there. Our next step is to get some of the soft legs out to put, make the loop. So we'll just get a little bit out, sort of estimate how much we're going to need. I think at least that much. So we'll cut that loose. Now I frequently cut a little more than I need. As I figure, it's better to have too much than not enough and have to start over. Because if you have to start over, you've wasted your wire anyway. So there's two pieces of wire. And we should be done with this so I can put this away. Now the next step is to hook... Um, the soft flex onto one of these loops. So just okay. 
Now I'm going to start up here because this is going to be the longer leg of the loop. And I want to make sure I get it long enough to um, for the beads to drop down where I want them to. So let's get this relatively close up to the not enough that it won't move, but enough that it won't um, create any other problems. And then we'll pull that in. I let, let loose of my wire, so let's check to make sure I still have it straight in there. There we go. Get your magical crimpers and go over that crimp tube. Now, these have a little divot in them, and you want to go right in the middle of the divot so that you form a little square when it squishes down. And then you turn them, go in again, and you turn a couple more times to make sure that you've got it rounded out nicely. Then we'll give it the tug test. It's working very well. And now we'll start adding our beads. Well, I will. Now, I left a teeny bit of tail there, so we want to make sure our bead will go over that tail. And it will, so that's good. And I'm going to go bead spacer, bead spacer, till I get where I want to hang the um, the other crystal. And then instead of the spacer, we're going to put in the um, the crystals, uh, the big crystals loop. Oh, maybe I'll put a spacer in too because these are pretty good size spacers, and we don't want it to to um, not, not look like it belongs there. So we're probably going to want one more crystal, and then this spacer, and then that one. Now after I get this out there and start to put it together, we're going to look at it and see if it really is working the way I want it. If not, then we will pull it apart and Maybe put some more crystals on or take some crystals off, but so far it's looking pretty cool. So now we're going to put this on. Slip it right through here. And then we'll put our next crystal on. Spacer. And another crystal. Now let's see how this pulls around here. Goes out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. And I like that. So we will now crimp this one closed. So of course we do it just like we did the other one by putting the crimp tube on, going through our loop, coming back and going through our crimp tube again, and also the first few beads. In this case, it's the one crystal and the spacer. We need to get this tightened up so that we can get in and crimp that. Now I am trying to get these tight enough without getting it too tight. And I think that's it. Okay, now we just and 
tug test. Okay, that seems to be good. So now we'll cut this wire, excess wire off. Making sure to just get the excess one, not the other side. And here's how that's going to hang. Now you might need to pull a little bit to get the soft flex to go the way you want it because it's going to be a little stiff at first. And it's going to sit, when you have the earring on, it's going to sit in a loop sort of like that. So let's get the other one put together and uh, then we will finish them off with their wire and one bead up the top. So of course to do the other we need the other crimp tubes. Our piece of soft flex and we'll just start and do it exactly the same as this. So we put the crimp tube through, put it through the earpiece, crossed. Okay, get her up there. Yep, that's about the same. Crimp tube in center. Squish. Turn it. And turn a couple of times. And test. And that's good. So now we need four beads, four of the crystal beads, four of the spacers on this side. So one. And get them over that extra wire. Two. So now that we've got the four on, we want to put the crystal on now. So slide that into place. And then we want the other two, two uh, blue crystals and one spacer. And there we go. And it's time to crimp this side. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Got to verify everything's good before I crimp this up. And it looks great. So we will get that done. I just crimp tube through the space. Around we go through the crimp tube. Come on, baby, go in there. And a few beads. Looks like it wants to go all the way through the beads, so that's great. No problem there. Now we will tighten her up. Oops, she fell out on this side to her. I'm going to cut a little bit of this off. And then put the beads back through here. So it's leaving quite a gap of space here which we don't want. Okay. I think we're about there right now. Probably need to get just a teeny tad tighter so we don't have a big gap here. And now we're ready, I think, to crimp this. Crimp tube in the middle of the crimp pliers. Tighten this up a little bit here. And
give it a test, a little test. That feels good. Now that one I did, ha it is a little looser than the other one, but I think it's still going to be fine. And so we'll cut this off. And then the next step is to um, put the little pieces up in the top. So we're going to get a tiny piece of um, 20 gauge wire out. We won't need these, so I'm going to put them away. Um, there, I knew I dropped one. So we'll get a little piece of, we're only going to need two of these, so I can put the rest of those away too. P little piece of 20 gauge wire. Why are you up there? And um, then we will put it from here with one crystal on it and up to the top to hook it to the ear wire and our earrings will be done. So let's get our wire out. I'm going to get, put these away so I don't dump them. We won't need a very long piece, probably only a few inches. So we'll just cut off a few inches for each side. So we'll just only need about that much, I would think. So then we can put the 20 gauge aside. So what we'll want to do is make a loop on the one end, but before we wrap it, we will snap it onto the end here. This has a sharp notch, so I'm going to cut it off. So um, there that. Get the bill making pliers out. Now, because I am going to put this onto here, I'm going to use the second size so that the loop's a little bigger, makes it easier to uh, go around and onto the loop there. So I've made this. Now we're just going to put this on. Carefully. Maybe there we go. Now that that's on, we hold it with the pliers right here below the uh, connection spot. And then we'll just wrap it two or three times around here. And then it will be look like this before I, um, boy, this is a weak little piece of wire. I hope that doesn't break. Um, we will cut this excess off here and tuck this in. Now put the one bead on the top. So it looks like this. And then we will See, this looks a little bit crooked down here, so let's straighten her up. Because she's going to face like this, so we want her going straight up and down. There we go. Then we will bend this over. And because our ear wire is going to come from the back, we want this loop to go the opposite direction. Like so. Now back to the small size. Over and around. And now before we snap this piece together, we'll put the ear wire in and that will keep us from having to open it up. 
Now remember, as you go up this direction, because I want this to be the front, <coughs> that you put the wire on like it's going to go backwards, because as it comes around, it will face the other direction again. See? So then hold your pliers again at the connection here, and again wrap. Cut that little bit off, being very careful not to cut anything else. Then that was empty. And tuck this in. Now remember, this is a glass bead, so you have to be careful not to snap it. Looks like it's a little crooked, so straighten it straight to each other. It's not tucked quite all the way. And there's one of our earrings finished. So now we just have to do the same to the other one to finish it off. So put this in the little tray for right now. We'll get this going for the second one. So just do the bend, the larger of the two sizes, since we're slapping it, snapping into that metal piece, turn it, come around, make sure she's straight, and wrap. Oh, nope. Sorry, don't wrap yet. You want to get your piece in there. Now hold it and wrap. Because I undid that last little wrap, I had that little gap there for making it very easy to, to um, snap the piece in. Now you want, I want like mine to go the opposite direction. So I want to check to make sure which is front and which is back on this one so that I make sure I get my uh, twist all the way so that it ends in the back. So we'll want it to go this way. So I'm right where about where I need it to be before I cut it. Just a hair's breadth more so it's towards the back a little more. And then cut it off and tuck it in. Now, next step is, of course, the bead, and then, and it actually looks like that's pretty straight, and then finishing off the top piece. So there we are so far. So now we'll do our bend. Now we're back to the smaller side. Round, turn back around, and here's where we put our ear wire on before we finish up. And remember what I said how, since we're wanting it to go this way, we want the ear wire to be facing the back as it goes onto this wire, um, and then as it comes around. Come on, baby, come around. Some of them like to be a little stubborn, and you might have to open up your loop just a hair's breadth to make them come in. Work it. There we go. Okay, now that it's in place, we hold it.
and then twist to our wraps. And when we get it towards the back, it's a bit, and then cut it. And tuck it in. Come on. And there's our second one done. So here we go. These are what our earrings are going to look like. For some reason, this one looks to be, well, let's check this out here. No, no, I thought so. See how that's a little bit different? I'm going to see if I can bend this particular ear wire or connector up so that it's matching just a little bit. Oh, it broke. Oh dear. Well, that wrecked that earring, didn't it? Well, we'll see what we can do. That's too bad. Those were pretty. But it was a bit weak. And it did break. And that was something I was afraid of. So, because I actually liked this connector, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make, I'm gonna get some heavier wire out. I have 16 gauge and I will make one. Okay, since this one did break, I experimented and made a replacement piece which I will have to cut this loose and re-thread it to make it work on this, but I just opened the loops up after I made them to put these um, pieces back on. So it works pretty good. So we'll make a second one so that they match for sure. Because as you can see, even though it's really close, it's not quite the same. So we'll make a second one of these and um, then we'll take this apart and put Put the new one on here. And since I don't have another one of these and I don't know what else I'd use it for, I may just cut it, cut these loose and instead of, we'll see what I decide to do. But let's get to making this second piece here. Now in order to make this, what I did was I took a piece of 14 gauge German style wire this is 14 gauge and I have a pretty good size piece here but um, so what I did I just started by making one of these little loops wrapping it with the smallest of my bell making pliers just like there there's the first bit this next spot is the trickiest because we need to make this loop up at the top. So how I did that was I warm the wire with my fingers and then I took the bigger, one of the bigger steps, this one for sure, and the third one up, and It wrapped it around here and came past this one like this. See, like there. Now what we need to do is again warm the wire because we want to go down now. So 
So we go to about right here and we cut this wire loose. I'm going to make a little extra because I don't want to make it too short. And then we put this aside and we make another small loop heading this direction. It's curling on me, but that's all right. Okay. Now we've got this, but I think it's too long now. I would, would have been surprised if it hadn't been. Yes, quite a bit too long. So we'll cut this loop off. and re-curl it. This is pretty heavy duty water, wire, so you probably want to, it's 14 gauge by the way, in case I didn't say, put it down towards the bottom some. Okay, just bend this a teeny bit more. And let's see if we're how close we are. Oh, we're still a teeny bit long, but not bad. I think we can fix that though. We'll, we will take and take a teeny touch more off and just finish cur curling it some more because it is going to um, flatten. When we flatten it, it is going to lengthen it a bit. So we don't want it to be too long right now. So again, finish curling that up. There we go. Here we are. Come on, baby. And that needs a little more curl in it, but other than that, it's pretty good. Now the next step is to flatten it out. So we get our mallet out and we go to work on this puppy. Now it's going to go a little bit out of shape. Excuse me for talking while I'm hammering. It's going to go out of shape just a little bit, and you have to shape it back up a little bit when you get it back, when you get it finished. But um, all in all, not a bad substitute. So let's switch to my chasing hammer and we'll give it some texture. And as soon as we're done with this texturing, then we can put it together again. I think I still have a little more texture on this one, so we will texture this just a teeny bit more. Now we'll lose it. <laughs> okay, got it back.
Okay, let's compare again. Okay. As you can see, that one did get a little bit longer and we are a bit out of shape. So let's see if we can get her better in shape here. This one needs to have its ring brought down considerably. Okay. This is lengthened enough, I may have to cut just a touch off and skinny it up some. Let's see, how about the other side here? It still needs to come over some. So. Okay, that's much better, but it's still too long. So let's see if we can get this to curl a little bit more. Now that we've got that done, let's pull this around until it touches. There we go. And now let's see how she looks. Okay, that looks much better. I think it's still a teeny bit longer on both sides. But I can bend this up here at the top just a bit more and I think I might have it. There we go. She's a little bit longer still. I can loosen that up just a bit and we can get that in place. Same with this other side. I think it's still just a teeny touch long. So we'll just trim these two off just a hair's breadth again. This one right here and this one right here either way are you gonna have a notch okay now we need to tighten those circles up again when you're doing this, because you've worked hard in this quite a bit, you want to get all the way up to the top of your plier so that you don't damage your plier. Okay. Okay. I think we're about as close as we're going to get without going overboard. So there is our two pieces. Now, pretty close to each other. 
This one could use a little more rounding right here, if I can get it to go. And then it will go to the other direction over here. This side. So we'll cut this piece loose. It'll go onto here. And then we have to cut our top pieces off as well to put them on the top. It's a pity this piece broke. I was really liking it. I think this piece might be a little more sturdy than the other one was. So rather than cut it apart, I am going to cut the wires off and we will just get a new piece of soft flex to finish off that this to redo this one because i may decide to find something i like to i want to use this particular piece for there's always that possibility come off the rest of the loop so we'll cut our soft flex and we will it. Put this piece aside. Shall we see how close we are to it with our homemade one? Oh, it's got a lot more curl in it, it looks like, but their top is smaller, but that's all right. The, this one works good. So put that aside. Hopefully we'll be able to use it on something else. And now we will restring these onto this new wire. Okay, I've gotten some new uh, soft flex out and some new um, crimp tubes. So we'll put this one together just like we had the original ones. We'll cut these loose in just a second and get this new baby going. Now, if I hadn't wanted to save that particular piece, I would have just cut it loose, and then I could have just opened these loops up um, to make to put the, the rings on, which is what I did with the other one. I just simply opened the ring up and s slipped the um, soft flex uh, wire through the loop. Okay, so we've got this one crimped, and we will cut this thread here now. Oop, came off faster than I expected them to. And just feed these back onto here. Oop, drop them off. goes over the wire. Now this is going to be now exactly like we did it originally. You're being a hugger. we go. Now we just need to crimp this onto this side and we will again have the bottom piece done. Okay, this one is not tight enough so let's tighten her up. Good. 
remember that these homemade ones do, do not have a welded closed spot, so I want to make sure that we have them closed all the way so they don't slip out. They are also thicker because the whole thing was, other than the middle bar, the whole thing was a little thicker than the other since I used 14 gauge wire. All right, you behave. Okay. and that appears to be good so we'll cut this extra wire off okay Now we just need to cut those little wires loose, get some more 20 gauge, and put uh, put them on the top. So first let's just cut these loose. It's a pity since they're so perfectly done, but say la vie. It is what it is. little scraps out of here get a couple of more new pieces of 20 gauge and get these finished off again I've got a couple new pieces of the 20 gauge wire and we will put the top back together again straighten these out some so if you're working with these little bars from their just be careful because they are sort of brittle. They do want, they did break on me, or one of them did. The other one did not, but the one did. And you want to be careful of that. And frankly, now that I've hammered these two to get pieces together, they're actually probably got a weaker spot there. But I don't think they're nearly as weak as the manufactured ones were. Cut this little piece off. Tuck this wire in. And 
one. It's looking pretty straight already, so that's good. Put the little bead on. And then put our earring wire back in place. Turn this baby off, being careful not to get anything else. And tuck her in. Now let's make sure that these um, are going opposite directions. They're looking pretty good. So now this earring is finished again with the homemade component. So now we'll put this baby together. Get your wires sort of straight. Make the bigger loop at the bottom. Put your ring in. hear that slight snap when that went into place something you want to listen for and hold it up now if your wrap wants to be um, difficult and not wrap easily you can always get your pliers out to help you finish it up see we want this one to go this way yes so it wants to have that wrap go a little bit further. Well, no, it's got three wraps, so it wants to, we want to cut it off in the back. Yep. So let's get back here. Cut it right back here. Being careful not to get your base wire. Okay. Tuck. Straighten her up some. And put your bead on. Now we need to do the last little bit. Put the ear wire on. So again, back to the smaller size, over and around. 
shoulder, straighten her up, and then put your ear wire in. Close. And then also screwed up my circle just a little bit, so we'll want to try and straighten that some by pulling it down. There we go. Right. And then wrap. and tuck her in. There's number two. And we are again finished with our earrings. Hope you like that. Let's turn up and see what we can see, take a better look at them. I hope you enjoyed those and the little impromptu wire work lesson, which we didn't mean to do, but we did. And uh, let's take a better look at these. Okay, so there's what our earring looks like. It will be relatively long. Very pretty, though. I like those. And I think they turned out really, really cool. And I hope you like them, too. Anyway, this has been Rose from In Rose's Garden, working with our uh, December Bargain Beak Box Winter Wonderland. And I hope you enjoyed that. Bye-bye.